because understanding what's involved is going to help you plan to how is going to help you plan for consistency to make sure that you're um, to make sure that you're consistent. And before I steal your thunder, because I just realized I was about to describe what this is about, why don't I turn it over to you? Because it is your show and you're the oh, <laughs> you're, oh. you're the important thing. So tell tell the folks why it's important to be consistent. Well, uh, I mean, there's like I was saying, there's some people where uh, podcasts is strictly a hobby. If you're really passionate about something, and that's fine. Those people, I have a lot of respect for them. Uh, a lot of podcasters are using it, uh, whether they're if they're in the coaching industry or personal development, they're almost they're using it really as a live or a recorded business card. So it's very important uh, when you're using that uh, podcast as your business card. To, and people are signing up to you know subscribe to your your feeds and get delivered your content to keep delivering you know if it's a, a weekly show if you're delivering them or releasing them on Monday keep them up because uh, people they'll get used to uh, to getting that and you know I know there's a discussion you know podcasts are evergreen and they stay online you know forever and that but you know if this in my opinion uh, is that you know once you build up that following, you lose a little bit of steam if you're releasing a show every two or three months. And I know it's hard because everybody's got stuff going on, but if you're going to be a weekly podcast, you know, do your best to keep that weekly. And now there's things um, things that you could do, and you're probably uh, you know familiar with batching and being in the interview business. But the nice thing is with these programs, uh, hosting sites, and you know different things, you could. If you can get a day where you can do five, six interviews, say you do six interviews, you've got enough there. I, I guess I consider it, you know, in the can. You have enough there to last you a month and a half. Get those, you know, put them in the Dropbox for the editor, or, or put set them aside for you to edit yourself, and get those all done up at once. So if you're going, uh, say, on vacation, or you're going to have a busy time at maybe a day job, you you know that that's sitting there being set to be released from your, you know on the hosting site or on your website. So we have the technology now, so if you can focus and be consistent, you're not going to lose momentum on your brand. Because uh, I have I read somewhere, I think there's, um, I don't know if anyone knows the exact number, there's somewhere around 250,000 podcasts, and I've read that up to 40% of them are actually dormant, they're inactive. And I think that goes back to, well, the point one, understanding how much work's involved. People start it, hey, this is fun you know, do five or six episodes maybe and then don't monetize and say, wow, this is a lot of work, do I keep going? But then also, yeah, I mean, if 40% uh, if are, are inactive, that means there's an awful lot of, of podcasts that aren't being consistent and uh, people losing momentum. Well, and that really becomes the key. So when you're saying consistency, it sounds like there's really two types of consistencies. I'm going to, I'm going to translate a little bit, at least what I picked up on. One type of consistency, because it's used as your business card, is consistency in your own message and you being consistent in the podcast so that people hear the same thing over and over and over. I mean, you look at some radio DJs like Howard Stern. I mean, once he, I mean, once he got his format, he didn't deviate from his format while he was on the radio for umpteen years. It was always the shock jock. It was always people knew what they were going to get. And it's funny. You know, there's a scene in, in the movie Private Parts where they're looking at the uh, where they're looking at the ratings, and they're like, you know, the you know his ratings were up amongst people who liked him, and, and they said, what what um, you know why? And they said, well, they want to see what he what he's going to say next. And he said his ratings was, were up in the people who didn't like him, and they said why? And he said because they want to see what he's going to say yeah. next. So the whole point is he was consistent and everybody kind of knew what they were going to get. The second yeah. and equally critical part of consistency you were bringing up is the consistency of show of show releasing and making sure that if you commit to a weekly, you figure out a way to make it a weekly show. Just, you know, just like Expert Showcase, I mean, you know, Expert Showcase is released on a weekly basis, but we have seasons, so we'll take a break in between, you know, maybe the, 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 the summer and the, and the fall season, like, you know, like other TV That's shows hard. do, but yeah. then it's like, okay, fine, you know, here, here you go, here's the, you know, here's the next season. So is that yeah. what you were, is, were those the two things exactly. you were talking about? Yeah, if you're going to take, uh, if you are busy, you're taking the summer off or something, you know, maybe announce it, put out a blog post, uh, let let your network know, hey, uh, you know, we'll see you again in September. So you're not just leaving them hanging, wondering if you're still doing the podcast, if you stopped it, if you, you know, that that's a very good idea. But you're right, though, I think uh, hosts a lot of times need 
you know, maybe need some time to recharge as well. So I think if you're if you're smart about letting your people know you'll be back with new episodes October 1st, then I think that's the way to go about it. So the other thing, and it's interesting because I do all the scheduling with Expert Showcase and other TV shows that we run, um, but I don't do a lot of scheduling with podcasts. So tell me, if is there a way that you can, if you have older episodes in the can that you can make them fresh again, re-release them, do a re like we do in TV, do a rerun, that sort of thing. I mean, is that is that a capability or um, or is it more manual where you're just downloading the episode and uploading it um, and re-releasing it? By the way, Matt, before you answer that, if you haven't had a client that's had to do it, it's okay to say it's it's okay to oh, say yeah. you haven't had a client that wants to do that. <laughs> yeah, I've had a actually. I just had this week a client sent me uh, some uh, an episode, and he said, "I can't even remember when we recorded this. I think I did it two, three months ago." So I guess the issue there is you've got to really listen if they're talking about something time sensitive. You know, if the uh, U.S. election's gone by and and they're making predictions on uh, Trump being the next president, then I guess you got to kind of watch for that or or talking like a bit about events. But the, the nice part is a lot of this stuff is going right back to Napoleon Hill till today. It's all, now I don't want to use the word recycled, but it's all kind of, you know, something that could help. Well, look, Gary Vaynerchuk's book was written almost you know, seven, eight years ago, and it helped me just this year. So it's good if um, I encourage people not to, and I've mentioned this to a few people, if you have an interview, from a few months ago, the quality is good, but it's you know you're saying, oh gee, it's a few months old. Uh, don't don't discount like throw it in the trash. You know maybe you know s listen to it and see if it could still help someone because that's that's content that you and your guests spent time uh, to come up with. Don't don't waste it. That could keep you uh, get you another podcast for for another week. So yeah, that's, that's a good, good question. Thank you, and, and 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 also in the vein of remaining consistent, consistently mention things and people in your podcast that are good for SEO, like Napoleon Hill, Trump. Yeah. I mean, you're you're you're, you're epic, man. I got to get you. I mean, you know, both you and both you and Mark come on and get and give some great mentions for SEO. But that's a topic. Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, <laughs> got to give a shout out to our our Canadian baseball team for sure. So hey, now wait a minute. I'm outside. I know you're in Canada. I'm outside Philadelphia. We still remember '93. '93. We're, we're still yeah. kind of. We're still kind of. Tweaking about nine three, but that's okay. That's okay. If we were in Colorado, we'd be happy. We'd be tweaking and we'd be happy. But anyway, that's besides <laughs> the point completely. You know, let's. I think that's a natural segue, and at least at least I got a chance to take my breath for an hour for you know my warm breath an hour. Let's move into um, the importance of producing a quality product. To watch the rest of this epic episode now, click on the link below the video. Do it now, you'll be glad you did. Are you still here? What are you waiting for? Watch the rest of this epic episode now by clicking on the link below the video.